Hi again. Now the spinal nerves. The spinal nerves are formed by motor and sensory fibers, okay, efferent and afferent. As we have seen, they also include sympathetic nerve fibers that jump from the sympathetic trunk through the communicating rami and they incorporate in the spinal nerves because there are structures here to be sympathetically innervated. Here you have the, this is the spinal cord, a representation with the cervical intumescence and the lumbar intumescence, right here. And from each spinal segment leaves a pair of spinal nerves and they are leaving the vertebral canal through intervertebral foramina. Okay. Remember that there are eight cervical spinal segments. However, there are just seven cervical vertebrae. For the rest of the spinal cord, there will be as much number of spinal segments as vertebrae, right? And here, all these spinal nerves, the ventral branches of these spinal nerves from C6 up to T2, they will form the brachial plexus and the spinal nerves from L4 up to, S, up to S3 are going to form the lumbosacral plexus. Here you have in this image the cervical vertebrae and I have put here the spinal nerves from C1 up to C8. Okay, As you see, the spinal nerves are living before the vertebra of the same number. So C2 leaves, leaves the vertebral canal between the atlas and the axis, and so on. However, as there are only seven cervical vertebrae and eight cervical spinal nerves, when we move to the thoracic region, then the nerves are abandoning the vertebral canal through the intervertebral foramina, but caudal to the vertebra of the same number. The same is going to happen at the lumbar region. Here we should have the L7, but couldn't be identified because there is the coxal bone. And here, but with an exception at the sacrum, because the dorsal branches of the sacral nerves live through the dorsal sacral foramina for the S1 and for the S2. And the same is going to happen for the ventral branches of the sacral nerves that live through the ventral sacral foramina then S3, C1, C2, etc., are going to leave caudal to the vertebra of the same number. Oh, here you have a dissection with uh, ventral branches or ventral rami, dorsal rami of, this, of these uh, spinal nerves at the cervical level. And as you see, from C6, C7, C8, T1, and sometimes T2, they form the brachial plexus. Here is another view, okay? Here is cranial, here is caudal. Okay, you, are, you see under the escalenous muscle, the ventral rami that form the brachial plexus leaving, right? C6, C7, C8, and T1, okay? Here is a dissection of the brachial plexus. And what I want you to show you is that these nerves that you already have in every book, right, are formed by, uh, for instance, are formed by several spinal segments. For instance, for instance, sorry, the suprascapula and suprascapula nerves are formed by C6 and C7 spinal nerves. Okay. The axillary is formed by C6, C7, C8. There, there could be some modifications. Okay. And for the rest, the pectoral nerve, the median and null nerve, etc. The musculocutaneous here, you have them, etc. You have for all of them. It is interesting to when you do this dissection that you see these are the spinal nerves C6, C7, C8 that are going to form part of the brachial plexus. 
So when they leave the vertebral canal at, into the, through the intervertebral foramen, the thickness increases. This is to the, in, an increase in the connective tissue forming the sheet around the spinal nerves at the level of the brachial plexus. It is also but less marked at the lumbosacral plexus. And this is to allow for the fibers to mix, okay? For the fibers of these spinal nerves to mix with others. There you have a drawing of the cervical intumescence and the spinal nerves that are formed at the, from the cervical intumescence. Some of them, they come from one just segment or two segments, like this, the brachiocephalic C6, the suprascapula, suprascapula C6, C7, etc. However, others, they are come from the musculocutaneous C6, C7, C8. The ra radial nerve comes from C7, C8, T1, and T2. So this makes sometimes difficult or or facilitates things when in the neurological exploration, because when we are testing the radial nerve, we are testing several spinal segments. So there you have a dissection of the brachial plexus and with all the nerves that are marked here in these pieces of paper. Okay, all right. So there we have a case. You see a hyper intense signal after the injection of gadolinium. Where are we? This is T1, this is C7, C6, C5, etc. So we identified this lesion at the level between the vertebra C7 and C6. If we look in a transverse section, we see hyper intense signal. This is a schwannoma that is invading the vertebral canal and affecting the spinal cord. Here we can draw the nerves and the spinal segments and the vertebrae. You see that we are at here at T1, this is for C7, etc. So the, we are, this, it is affecting the spinal segments at the level of C6, C7 in the cervical intumescence. Okay, so then which nerves are formed by the level of C6, C7? The suprascapula, suprascapula, musculocutaneous, this includes another one, axillary, long thoracic nerve, is this one here, on top of the serratus ventralis, thoracic portion, right? The long thoracic nerve, yes, the radial nerve C7, C8, T1, and T2. So, which in this MRI, which muscles could be affected in this case? This is not the case, but which ones? So, maybe the suprascapula, we have it here. Suprascapula here. We also have here, which one? The serratus. This is the serratus ventralis, thoracic portion as well. Okay, we have seen it. Or in this image here, we have the supraspinous infraspinous superscapula right here and the serratus ventralis thoracic portion so we also identify this right the phrenic nerve the phrenic nerve is coming from branches from the c5 c6 and c7 from ventral rami of these spinal nerves they form the phrenic nerve that is innervating the diaphragm. Other nerves at the level of the abdominal region, we have the thoracolumbar, right? The T13, the cranial il iliohypogastric nerve, this L1, L2, that forms the caudal iliohypogastric nerve the ilioinguinal L3, L4, the lateral cutaneous femoral nerve. Here is another dissection. We have removed the right pelvic limb and we see these nerves that are going to, going to form the lumbosacral plexus. 
L4, L5, L6, right? And then we have this L4 that is going to form the lateral cutaneous femoral nerve, which is a sensory for the skin. And also the L4, L5, and L6, they form the femoral nerve here. Yeah? So we, have, we, can, we can do the same as, the, uh, as in the previous image. We can add colors. So we see the femoral as L4, L5, L6. We see the obturator nerve formed by L5, L6. The sciatic nerve formed by, formed by L6, L7, and S1. And the cranial gluteal L6, L7. And the caudal gluteal L7, S1. And also from the sacral nerves, the pudendal nerve. So at the lumbar intumescence, things are more easier to localize lesions. Why? Because apart from some of the nerves that come from just one or two uh, spinal segments, the, ones, the, the nerves that we usually test are the femoral for the patellar reflex. And this comes from L4, L5, L6. We also test the sciatic. And this comes from L6, L7, L7 S1. And the pudendal nerve that comes from sacral segment. So it's easier to localize a lesion at the lumbar intumescence. Here we have another video. We have removed the pelvic limb, the right one, and now we are going to remove the right coxal bone. And we will identify the nerves that form the brachial, ple the, the lumbosacral plexus. Sorry. And as you see, this is the femoral nerve, one run here, that is formed by L4. Now we'll see that by L4, L5, L6. It is the same that this is in a video and continues here as the saphenus. The sciatic nerve here. This is the obturator right here. The sciatic L6, L7, and S1 coming down there. 6, 7, and S1. Okay, the obturator here, the femoral L4, L5, L6. And if we move caudally, the, we move the cranial gluteal, the caudal gluteal nerve, and we should identify at this area the sacral nerves here. Okay. Here we see this has changed, this is cranial, this is caudal, and you see the sacral nerves here, in particular S1, S2, and a very thin S3. And you know that these nerves form the pelvic nerve or pelvic nerves. So now, here again, with the sacral ones, this is another dog, so it has S1, S2, and S3 is thicker in this case. Okay, the sciatic nerve, L6, L7, S1, right here. And then, we are going to move this dorsally in order to identify the pelvic nerves here, these pelvic nerves that are ventral branches of the ventral rami of the sacral nerves that are joined by the, hypogast by the hypogastric nerve. You see? So here again, we see this is the sciatic nerve. And then we have the caudal cutaneous femoral nerve coming from the sacral spinal nerves, the pudendal nerve running with the pudendal vessels, with the internal pudendal internal pudendal vessels. More images, the pudendal nerve, again, cutaneous femoralis, caudal cutaneous femoralis nerve, and the pelvic nerve, as it is another case, here there is just one pelvic nerve. As you see, the pelvic nerve, there is just one. 
we could have one or two pelvic nerves coming from the ventral rami of the sacral spinal nerves. So we come to dermatomal mapping. So we can map areas on the skin of the animal that are innervated by particular sensory nerves. So you have that on the text in the PDFs as well. So you can go and check for the different areas. Okay. And finally, the clunial nerves here, the clunial nerves, that means from Latin clunis, buttock, there are the clunial nerves are nerves to the skin of the pelvic region right here. Okay. And they are, they receive the, or they set, they are sensory for this, the part of the skin that is on top of the region of the pudendal nerve and rostral to the caudal nerves. This area here, this is from the clunial nerves that are branches. Well, it depends because there are cranial clunial, middle clunial, and caudal clunial. Okay. The cranial clunial are branches from the caudal lumbar nerves. The middle clunial nerves are branches from the sacral nerves. And the caudal clunial are branches from the sacral, sacral plexus. Thank you very much.